Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Multi Monday. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at the Barrel Age Stouts. Um, now, this is under uh, BJCP guidelines as a specialty wood aged beer. Um, so, after we do tonight, there will be no more Barrel Age Stouts on Multi Monday. But since it's under specialty wood beer, we can still do other beers that are aged in barrels. So you find some other ones out there like barley wines and other, other things like that. that might might have that um, done to them. So don't fret. We can still go on with some, some nice barrel beers after this. But uh, I want to welcome my panel tonight. Uh, on panel right now, we have uh, Thrash Metal Homebrew. Um, Cheers. Let me take this down. Nobody's name is showing. There we go. Uh, we got Miscellaneous Magnets right over there. Hello, Miscellaneous. We have Louisiana Barrel Age Stout Reviews. But he also does other beers and whiskeys and whatever else you can find. Find that's in some type of... Uh, of a glass or can. Uh, we also have John Anelli. Hello. Large beer reviews. And Michael Kormoroff. Hello. So this is my starting panel. Um, down in the basement right now, we have Thomas Metal 75 and Beer Man. And we okay. may have um, some others show up as well at some point. Who knows? Uh, I want to say uh, cheers to the chat. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, hopefully you have a barrel-aged stout of some sort and you can drink along um, as we uh, go through the uh, BJCP guidelines of the specialty wood-aged beers. And uh, we, uh, also just drink along with, as, we, uh, as we talk about our beers and see if you notice any uh, similarities in what you might have. So thank you to the chat. We got Ronald Sutton in there, Kyle, uh, anonymous coward, and beer man, beer man, and uh, Vanessa Kitty was first. She was the first one here. So hopefully Here's she's still me. hanging out. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll just move right on over to the specialty wood aged overall impression: a harmonious blend of the base beer style with characteristics from aging and contact with wood including alcoholic products previously in contact with the wood. The best examples will be smooth, flavorful, well-balanced, and well-aged. Comments on this. The base beer style should be apparent. The wood-based character should be evident, but not so dominant as to unbalance the beer. The intensity of the wood-based flavors is based on the contact time with the wood. The age, conditioning, previous usage of the barrel, and the type of wood. Alcoholic products previously stored in the wood should be evident, but should not be so dominant as to unbalance the beer. This category should not be used for base style where barrel aging is a fundamental requirement for the style. Flanders Red, Lambic, etc. So I guess those would be out if we did, did this just based off that comment right there. Um, specialty wood aged wild ale should be entered in the wild specialty style. Not going to go over the commercial examples there. There's uh, there's no history on this because it is a very wide um, range of, of products this could be. But we are going with the the uh, barrel aged stouts tonight. And to start us off, we have Thrash Metal Homebrew in Barbie. Cheers, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Cheers, man. Yes. Yeah. All right. So first off, I'd like to say cheers to the chat and cheers to Bumpy. Thanks for uh, having me. I have tonight, I have from Kansas City, Missouri, from Boulevard Brewing Company. I have the uh, Boulevard Whiskey Barrel Stout, Barrel H. It's, it comes in at 11.8% ABV with uh, 32 IBUs. I went ahead and poured it up just a couple minutes ago if you were watching. And if you see, it has a, a lingering... Um, head that is just around the rim slight amount on top as well 
I'll go ahead and go through some notes I made a little earlier. I got a four pack, so I got started early so I can get some really good notes on this thing. So uh, this is one that I, as a go-to that I like to, I love to go to. Uh, first off, I'd like to put the brewer's comments. Actually, I'll wait till the end because I, I did my kind of initial review uh, before I did that. Uh, the beer clarity is dark. It's like a used motor oil black. You, if you put a light up to it, you can't see through it. It's that viscous, uh, which is really nice. Uh, the beer's head is tan. It was fluffy and frothy when it first was poured. Uh, tight, medium-sized bubbles and non-lingering. The basic notes on the smell is malty, graham cracker, biscuity, toffee, Toast, roast, espressos all over the place, vanillas all over the place, the chocolate hits you up front. It does have a, a dark fruit aroma. It's got plum and dates in, in my palate. And let's go in for a taste. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers man. Roasted chocolate notes right up front. Toffee is there right on the cheeks. Coffee's all over your tongue. The malty notes are, aren't tart or astringent at all. It's really bold and complex. One thing I really like about this is it's not so overwhelming in the roast. It allows that mellow, malty, chocolate, kind of that chocolate bar, the milk chocolate bar type taste just envelop your whole mouth. This is one of those real complex beers that it just goes through stages, not only as it warms up, but as you drink it through each layer of, of the temperature that it goes through, it is very intense. Um, the, the beer taste evolves. It, uh, it's, it's thick like chocolate, chocolate milk, dissipates to reveal a slight alcohol note that's not overwhelming for an 8 point or 11.8 percenter. And it suggests hints of dark fruit, the kind of a raisiny plum that's in there. The beer's finish is semi-dry, sweet, slightly alcoholic, but warm, but, but it's really warming, uh, very quenching, and it's got a lingering coffee roast at the end, complete end. When it all goes down, what's left is that coffee roast, like you had a really good espresso. Uh, the mouthfeel is smooth, silky, creamy, warming, plus, plus very viscous, and the beer's carbonation level is creamy light. It's a full, heavy roast. Medium balanced, medium light. Oh, nope. I forgot to edit that part. It is full and heavy and robust. It's not medium balanced, medium light, or delicate at all. So this one will get a, a big ranking from me. And when you come back to me for the for the final number, I'll go ahead and go over the brewer's comments on this and see how close we were. So cheers, everybody. Awesome. Cheers, Cheers, Brian. Brian. Awesome. Now, when you when you mentioned uh when you mentioned the uh the kind of roasty finish to it like like kind of like an espresso or coffee is it like a bitter like a bitter coffee or is it like more sweet no that's one thing i like about this one there's a lot of stouts that are out there that are just so astringent that you know you get that like tannin taste from the grain that's not there at all you get that like a really good uh roasty espresso that you know and it um it's it's not real bitter, but it does it does linger just a little bit, but it's not overwhelming. Nice. Awesome. That's a good beer. I've had that one. I was happy to get it. Awesome again. beer, yeah. <laughs> it's not one I get all the time because uh, where I get it with tax and everything, it's over sixteen dollars for a four pack. It's not good. bad. It's just that I don't like to spend a lot of money on it. <laughs> Bumpy. <laughs> that doesn't I, I fit the criteria. My beer for so long, I need to drink something. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Sorry it went so long, but it's yeah, sorry, very beers. good review. Awesome. As, uh, Ronald Sutton, it was. Thank you, Thrash. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on to Miscellaneous. He's going to show us uh, what he's working with. If All I can right. find his big screen. There we go. All right, guys. So I've got something local beer. Made in Florida. This is by Funky Buddha called the the Love Below. Um, this is an imperial stout aged in Cabernet barrels and bourbon barrels with cherries and chocolate. Wow, twelve percent. Um, it's got a little 
This is from their Living Barrel series. Um, it's a rotating stock. I've only seen these at one store, and I went there today. There was only two left, so I got one. It was quite spendy. Um, let me see. They say that this is um, it's a the love below is a very special version of our Nikolai for love. Russian Imperial Stout that's been aged and Cabernet barrels and bourbon bounty barrels for months. Um, together comes along with real cherries and 100% chocolate, thick and sultry. This is a beer best consumed with a very special friend. So um, I've been wanting to try this for a long time. I'd spent $29 on this bottle of beer. Holy cow. Um, yeah, it's been haunting me on the shelf. And I just went for it. So, wow. Glad, yeah. uh, glad my show could finally push you over the edge. Well, I like to buy <laughs> spendy beers regardless, but I didn't want to come up here with Dragon's Milk. No, not that there's nothing wrong with that, but I really wanted to try this beer. Um, the age on the bottle is 322.19. So, this is a year aged already. When I bought the bottle, it had dust on it. <laughs> um, yeah, very, very black, oily. Um, they definitely ain't seeing nothing through there. Um, more of a cocoa, cocoa colored head. Um, one finger. Wish I had my stout glasses still, but broke them. Mm. Definitely getting like rich, um, roasty chocolate notes getting a slight there's definitely some cherry cherry notes coming off of this as well it smells awesome let's do, let's dive in cheers cheers oh man well lives up to the hype um absolutely uh, like milk chocolate forward um it's a little, little warming, not too boozy. Um, I like um, some of the stronger beers. Um, it's not, not overbearing on the, on the wood, um, on the barrel aging, because sometimes you get some of these beers and it's just like, wow, I just like ate a chunk of the <laughs> toasted barrel. It can be too much from time to time. This is very smooth, rich, nice, creamy mouthfeel. Um, Definitely getting light, light hints of cherry. It's not too overwhelming. Um, really good, man. I am, um, I'm, I'm happy with this. Mm. Did you say there was a born on date on that one, Drew? Yeah. Okay. Three twenty two nineteen. Oh, so it's saved. Nice. Yeah. It's already um over a year old. Man, That's there is that. The barrel. <laughs> that uh, yeah. Oh. Um. Definitely getting some fruity cherry notes out of it. It's good though. It's nice and it's nice and mellow. It's very <laughs> harmonious. Um, great tasting beer. Cheers. 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 Sure is it warm. What'd you up. say we'll that? Get some more. Would you say the alcohol uh, volume was? In Twelve that beer? percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does sound very delicious. So you're happy. You're happy with your purchase. I am. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I. I don't know if I'd go spend thirty bucks again, but it was right. worth trying it at least once. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's good. I've. I've. I haven't had. I only had one crappy beer by that company, and it was their Hefeweizen, and the Floridian, and it was terrible. It's like sawdusty. Bleh, it wasn't good. Sounds like they're better with the darker beers. <laughs> so we're going to have uh, Ron, Terrio come up. Um, so Ron, I'll have you do is just go through like the, the normal tasting thing like that. And I'll have John and then I'll have Michael go through theirs. And then I'll go back to you so you can give your score before I bring up any, anybody else. So um, once once Michael goes with, with uh, talking about his beer, we'll go back and give your score. Um, and also shout out anything you have coming up and everything. Because I know that you have Dawn Busters coming up early in the morning. So I will. Uh, Dawn Busters taste. 
Um, well, first I want to say um, hello to Beer Man and Thomas Metal 75, also known as Massachusetts Beer Reviews, who's waiting in the back room uh, on, you know, the backstage. I have Dragon's Milk White Barrel Aged Stout. Ooh. It wasn't expensive. It's only like about nine ninety six for a four pack. Uh, it's from Michigan. They don't give a good. Well, actually, they don't give any description on their website. They just say it's barrel aged, white stout. I said, well, that tells me you know nothing about ingredients. Don't even tell you. Doesn't even tell you whose barrels they are. But anyway, you know what's strange. If you look on the Paps Brewing Company website, it lists Dragon's Milk as one of their brands. Hmm. That is strange. <laughs> yeah, not only that, I know it's not some mistake because when I noticed the people that distribute Paps beer also distribute Dragon's Milk. Huh. So I don't know if they bought them out or if they have some kind of distribution agreement, but it's definitely being shown as one of their brands. Okay, there's a hey, what's ABV? Is it the same eleven as the standard Dragon's Milk? No, no, it's only six percent. Six percent. Six percent. Okay, thanks. So it's mild. It's not. It's none of these blockbusters like they're showing. It's just like blah. All right, okay. but that's okay. Mm -hmm. The nose, okay, look at the appearance. It's strange, right? Like, come on, this is not a stout. I don't know what Dragon's Milk's trying to pull. But like a New England IPA. I, I hate to tell you, Ron, you're probably going to be disappointed I had that, and I was. Well, I had it twice before, so I know what I'm getting into. I was just bringing it to this show. But it's like, to me, this is like a blonde ale, you know what I'm saying? Like, but anyway, I don't want to get into some big style conflict, but I, I don't think anybody thinks of style thinks of this. You can smell the bourbon Everybody's on it, boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See? He says, okay. You can smell the bourbon on it. And it's got some vanilla aroma and some kind of... I don't know what that smell is. It's like coconut cream pie or something. I don't know why it would smell like that. Y'all hear different me okay? Kind of <laughs> yeah. A different kind of stout, all right. Well, anyway, so Slender Bar. That means cheers and uh, like Gaelic. Um, cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers. Boy, this thing is dry like a old bone that you give to a dog. <laughs> hey, you want to be thirsty? Drink this. Um, you get the bourbon <laughs> barrel. You get... Unusual twangy oddball Duncan Hines cream cheese icing taste like you get with Gen Genesee cream ale. Is it I really that good? But I think I sweet. I can't say that. It's just strange. And then you get this grain husk, like, um, not like barley, but like barley husks. They boiled it too hot. Or they boiled the husks in it with it. Or mashed it too high. So you get some <coughs> bready milk. Like if you had a child and you want to let them dip bread and milk with some eggs to make like... um. French toast, and then you pull it up, and the eggs would be dripping off of it in like a slimy way. 
Um, it doesn't, it doesn't it, sound very appetizing it, the way you're describing it. Exciting. <laughs> I know. I think I should go get some of that cinnamon I have. You know, the cinnamon, and I could put it on there like I do with the um, the eggnog. <laughs> Media mouthfeel. I don't know what to make of this. It's um, it's a mystery. I kind of like it though. I like odd things, so I'm kind of eccentric anyway. So when the going gets weird, the weird go pro, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess there's going to be an interesting score coming up on that one. <laughs> yeah, either going to be really, really good, or that was a, was a very different beer. <laughs> In my opinion, um, I enjoyed I it actually when I had it, but um, I don't know. I'm weird like that. I like weird products. So, <laughs> like MD twenty twenty gold. Mm -hmm. Mad dog. Sweet oh. pineapple yeah. deliciousness. Mm -hmm. Vanilla. All right. The, well, beer, the beer that your brain has been talked about a lot tonight. So. I almost removed you from the. This screen. is one of my go. <laughs> one of my go-to uh, barrel aged stouts. Um, you know, quarantine or not, I can always rely on this. I can always find this beer, no matter what's going on in the world. Uh, four packs here are thirteen ninety nine, which I think for a, an eleven percent bourbon barrel aged stout, I think that's a heck of a deal. I poured it right as the show started. As you can see, there's some nice head retention. The appearance. Very, very dark brown, almost black. The aroma. And so this has actually had time to warm. Um, it's been, what, 15 minutes or so, since this, or 22 minutes now since the start of the show. On the aroma, I'm getting um, actually barrel notes right up front, and I think that's because it's had time to warm. I'm getting dark chocolate, toasted bread, a little bit of vanilla in there as well. And then on the very, very back in there, I'm kind of picking up on a slight coffee note. Obviously, there's not coffee added to this beer, but I'm getting a little bit of coffee, I think, from the dark roast. It smells absolutely delightful. Uh, it's just a such a pretty beer, too. All right, so I'm salivating here. I got to go ahead and get into this. Cheers, guys. Cheers, John. Slunge of our. Prost. Would you call me? No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so <laughs> very, very good, very smooth. Um, initially, what I'm getting is some dark chocolate. In the middle of the sip, you're getting that toasted oak, those barrel notes, um, some nice vanilla as well, which could be coming from the barrel aging. Um, it's very, very smooth. The body with this is on the medium side. It's definitely a little bit lighter than other beers of this ABV magnitude. I mean, 11% is getting up there. So it's a little bit light for the alcohol, but the alcohol is masked well, and it makes it super smooth. It almost has like a milk stout mouthfeel, very creamy mouthfeel. The finish is slightly bittering. I'm getting a little bit of like a coffee bitterness on the finish, but it's very, very mild. Uh, the carbonation with this is light to almost medium, but not quite on the medium side. This is just such a great barrel-aged stout. The price is, is on point, and it's very widespread. A lot of people can get this. Everybody's talking about it. I mean, if, you, if you're if you a barrel-aged stout drinker, chances are you've probably had uh, the New Holland Dragon's Milk Barrel-Aged Stout. They also have other variants, but this is the original. Everybody can pretty much get the original. I just right. love this beer. Um, I keep... You know, going back to it, no matter how many great, expensive, world-class barrel-aged stouts I drink, I never hesitate to go back to this, whereas I would hesitate to go back to something like the Guinness Draft at this point because I've had so many better stouts. So I think that speaks to the quality of this beer because I keep going back to it, even though I keep trying all these really great beers. So uh, wonderful beer. I'll give you a rating here shortly, but definitely – um, recommend this to anybody who hasn't already had it. And if you aren't familiar with barrel-aged stouts and you're looking to get into 
a barrel aged stout, this would be kind of an easy introduction into the higher alcohol realm of barrel aged stouts because it's very mellow and easy drinking. Sippers. Nice. Yeah. I bought I bought uh, some of those for my wife, actually. So I have one still in the fridge, but I'm saving it for her in case there's another special occasion. <laughs> here. You drank the other three. <laughs> I drank one. No, she had two. She had two in one night. I don't know what I did wrong, but she drank two. Um, all right, Michael. Okay. Right. This is Central Water Stout from the Brewers Reserve Series. The brewery is out of Amherst, Wisconsin. And Tyler Manzel was the first one who told me about this company. I had not heard of them. And I've had other beers from their company. It poured a very dark brown, as you can see in the glass, with a khaki head. And the head retention is good. Nice beer in the glass. Yeah. Hardly can see through it, but it is dark brown and not black. Let me give it notes. Okay, you're getting the um, the bourbon notes up front. You're also getting kind of a woody oak kind of smell from the um, barrels. Some vanilla. Maybe a little bit of espresso, espresso coffee, but it's more in the background. Some dark fruit. A lot of the things that everybody else is mentioning in their beers. Let me give it a taste. Cheers. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. Wow. Cheers to you. Okay. The bourbon is the lead taste that you get, but the it's kind of like the oaky woodiness is, is right behind it. And they're like together. It's very complex. It, it's getting the, the same flavors that I that I was able to smell. The vanilla is there, the dark fruits there. Medium mouthfeel. The alcohol is well masked. It's 10.8 if I didn't mention what the ABV was. Very drinkable and very nice. Um, I'm enjoying it. And I will have a number for you shortly. Very, very no good. alcohol? It's no masked alcohol well. presence? It's masked well. It's more like, I guess the, the best way to describe it, it's more like it's not a standard stout, but it's more like some of the double stouts you have. They're about eight or nine percent. That's what it tastes like. But it's a little bit. It covers it up, and you you certainly don't taste ten point eight. I'm enjoying it. Very good. Nice. Nice, Mike. Definitely sounds good. Ron, are you on a cell phone right now? Is he frozen? Uh oh Now he's in full drift no, mode. I think he just had his hand resting on his face. He just fell right. asleep. There he is. So we'll uh, go back to you now, uh, Ron, for your for your score. Do you want to give uh, you know any uh, shout outs? Anything that's coming up? Now is your time. Okay. There was a little internet connection problem just now. It was sending me a message from a. Streamyard saying some about some kind of internet connection. So I don't know if you were trying to talk to me, but it kind of went. Yeah, kind of you, you kind of froze up. I thought you were on the phone. It looked like you had a cell phone or something, and then you went. No, I was just listening. I thought you were it was saying. It. It was, <laughs> no, it was just saying it was some kind of connection problem. So I was just waiting for it to clear up, and I figured, well, I hope they're not waiting on me, but I was wrong. Okay, um, sorry about that. No problem. Um, I don't know. This thing is strange. I mean, I guess I'll give it a 90. It's still milky, though. Like, why would this thing have, like, would they put milk in it? Um, yeah, probably some lactose. I'll say on the score, Thomas Metal, I say, yeah, I, I wish I'm not as chill as you think, FACP. That's a that's a an, it, that's a facade. Um, I'll say ninety two, man. But I'm going to put a little bit of this Stedman Select in it. <laughs> so that's that's, a, that's definitely going to add up. 
That, that'll raise Amp the right hand. <laughs> that stem and selects good stuff too. That'll, that'll really give it that bourbon barrel finish. <laughs> yeah, that's coming from Buffalo Trace Distillery. Remember that video David and I did with the CBS? He didn't like it until we put the uh, Kentucky whiskey in. He was like, no, it tastes good. <laughs> yeah, he lost He lost a lot of cool points with me after I watched that video. That was, <laughs> man. It was rough. I know. Well, y'all did a lot of cool things together in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. No, I, I know. Which, I'm just kidding. Much, it was a lot of fun. Much of which involved drinking beer mass quantities from what i heard <laughs> well david's a pretty yeah, big guy I mean, he, he can uh he drinks like a fish <laughs> but take note i did not mention the liquor consumption that day i left that completely out of the discussion so thank goodness <laughs> well, i did I'll, i won't mention it if you don't i won't so forget it folks um well <laughs> It really, it just adds some woodiness to it. I mean, what can you say? Now it tastes more woody. It tasted, but it tastes less milky. So, hmm. Still, 92, A minus. Um, I don't know what to say. I just, I'd have to drink a whole six pack. I've only had three of these cans. It's strange that it only comes in cans too. Maybe that's some kind of reason for that. It's sold in bottles. I don't know. Figure it out. It's a mystery. Yeah, the one I had. I was still don't think 92 camp. is a bad score, though. No. It's still an A. Hey, hey, it's still yeah, it's only made. Yeah. Only cans. Now, it uh, tastes better in glass. Um, we'll never know, apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> miscellaneous. Uh, what would you score? You didn't score it at 92, though. Um. You know, I went into the beer with good intentions. Um, I'm like, well, I like dragon's milk. Let's um, let's give it a run. Um, I, I honestly didn't think it was anything special. It was definitely something out of the box. They tried it. Um, it, it, it was a little weird. Um, I definitely wouldn't be in the 90s if I had to score it. Um, I'd probably be at a, like a mid-80s to a higher 80s. It, it just didn't meet the mark. In my opinion, um, I'm not a. Some of those six percent stouts, they can hit it, and it can be exactly what it's supposed to be. But I, I felt like that missed the mark, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, is it better with the extra bourbon? Um, David does not have his own channel. Uh, better with the extra bourbon? I wouldn't go that far. Uh, maybe. Now you know. I'll say this. I, I'm sorry for talking too much. I'll say this. Remember when I earlier commented about how dry it was? Like, oh, oh, it's so dry. Now I don't see that now. Mm. Maybe the bourbon has toned That's that down. True. Might have toned down the dryness, the bourbon, the added bourbon. Yeah, I don't know how I could do that. But um, I, oh, anyway, uh, I would recommend people try it, though. I would say go out and buy it because it's so unusual that – um. And I don't think there's anything wrong with trying something a little bit strange. So um, hmm. it's like a zero dollars and forty nine cents. Dragon's milk, cheapest dragon's milk product that we get here for a six pack in my area. It's only nine ninety nine. So I think it's a pretty good value right. for a six I pack. I, I think it. Wait a minute. I think it's a like, six pack. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a six pack. pack. I that I don't know. I bought a single I'm can. Pretty it was sure like it's a, that's the only dragon's milk. I'm pretty sure they sell it in six packs because it's only six percent alcohol. Yeah, I was going to. I get think it so. Tonight. Oh, okay. Well, I paid two. I paid two forty nine for the can. You know, so that's that's a sounds about All right. right. Well, thanks with for what tolerating me, Bumpy. <laughs> thanks for being on. Any? Uh, did you want to? Shout out like what's going on this week. We yes, tomorrow Taylor. morning I'm going to tomorrow. Well, uh, we're going to do wild card. We're going to do a uh, uh, tremendous Tuesday tomorrow night at seven Eastern. Anybody can join. We always welcome everybody. Then uh, wild card Wednesday, 
uh, Wednesday at 7.20 to 7.30. Thursday, William Kepley's got a big showdown and uh, for macro beers. And then uh, I don't know of anything Friday. Saturday, we might do another super inclusive Saturday, but uh, that'll be around 7 Eastern. Now, tomorrow morning, I got Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge, and I'm going to do Cooper's Craft versus... Uh, Virginia Black. This one is about $23 a bottle. Virginia Black run about $38 for a full-size bottle. But I got them for not, yeah, and I got them for $9.99 and $10. How you like that? You can't beat that with a stick. You can't beat You can beat you, though. Right, I got the $38 bottle for 10 bucks. And I got the $23 bottle for $9.99, so I'm happy. So you're you know, doing things, a lot of wheeling and, and I'll dealing. just listen to the Walmart there, Ron. <laughs> no, I didn't wheel and deal at all. I just went into the store. No, I went into the store and that was the price, and I bought it. John and Illy knows what I'm talking about. He looks for a guy with a big old long trench coat. Dude, you want this? Well, if you're looking for man, you be looking for big birdies in Canada. Whoa, whoa, Just whoa, FYI, whoa, really quick, like um, the, the Dragon's Milk White, I looked it up, is the is the one Dragon's Milk product that is sold in six packs of 12-ounce cans. So it is it is a six-pack. There you go. For anybody out there that might be interested in buying it, it's I think it's a value for that price with that, you know, for six of them. Just, just buy one, people. See if you like that. it before you buy six, in my opinion. Yeah, but I don't or buy, buy one. Six, buy if one. you don't like the first one, just chug the rest of them, get them, you know, and then you'll be fine. That's right. They're either. Two yeah, shakes. Good chug. Three shakes. Three shakes. All right. <laughs> well, that's it, Bumpy. So kill, kill. He's saying kill Ron. Get him out. Get him out. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring Ron out. Um, I'm going to bring. Somebody else up from the basement. Take um, Cheers, Ron. Good to see you. Again, now, man. what, what yeah, else I want to do? Because we do have uh, Thomas Metal seventy five and Cheers, Ron. You can drop me out Ron. too. Drop me out uh, for a minute. Drop, drop you out for a minute. Well, Six, for until, until we come back around. Exactly. To do this. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna. Bumpy, are you gonna do yours next, and we're gonna go around with who's here? No, Bumpy always goes last. Yeah, I always go last, so it's gonna be the, the two in the basement. Okay. Yeah. So okay, I'll drop. Uh, I gotta find Ron. There you are. All right. Thank you for joining again, Hi, Ron. Ron. Ron, we'll see you on Wednesday. John, hopefully we'll appreciate see you, on you. Wednesday too. Yeah, I hope so. You and maybe broke. Saturday. Who knows? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I'm going to drop out John and Nelly, and we'll bring you back up. So you just stay put in the basement. And don't go to McDonald's. Goodbye, John Vanilli. <laughs> don't go to McDonald's. <laughs> no. Okay. Only 10 minutes away from So now we have uh, Thomas Metal 75. Uh, you are next up to present. Okay. So let's see some other things I can bring to the table on the examination that uh, Thrash Metal did. On this Boulevard uh, whiskey barrel style, I have barrel age one, obviously, uh, eleven point eight percent, and it's thirty two IBUs. This says it's uh, best by date on bottle. I couldn't it's find it online. Twenty twenty. However, like screw that. Oh, this there it is. Aged and can keep for a long while, if you ask me. Yeah, um, mine's mine's mid December two, twenty twenty. Sweet. Mine is been in the glass and sitting out for a while so i think it's getting to optimal temperature the stella artois glass is, is kind of similar to what's traditionally called a stout glass so why the heck not um so when i opened it i immediately even just it being like say like that far away from my nose i was still getting like good milk chocolatey and dark roasted <clears throat> out of it and i mean yeah ruby red tinges but it, you know around the glass but it's just pretty dark with that pan head um, so for me in the nose, <laughs> woo, hello, Buffy. Oh, no, that was beer, man. <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot to mute, man. Sorry. Chocolate. Milk, chocolate, caramel, toffee, sweetness, uh, cocoa nut, cocoa nut, and 
not a giant amount of the booze, but yeah, that's basically one of the giant dark chocolatey, milky kind of notes. Cheers. Cheers, Eric. Cheers, Cheers Eric. Cheers. Ooh. I tried this once or twice before. Yeah, ooh. that is at this point when it warms, dark soaked cherries 120 percent is that the feeling that you're getting you melt down that chocolate bar and then you add that and then you roll the cherry and then you pop the cherry yeah <laughs> damn um like a I mean, bonbon quality pretty much yeah that's a good that's a good analogy in that one medium stickiness it's actually refreshing for what it is surprisingly it is not like highly drinkable though but it does have some type of refreshing quality. It's kind of strange in that one. And it does have a little itty bitty teeny weeny tiny burn, but not a whole bunch once you swallow the beer. Um, yeah, this one's pretty good. Again, it you didn't know and you were blindfolded. I think this was some kind of chocolate stout, or that's how they're marketing it on the uh, on the on the labeling. Uh, definitely drink this because I've had it before in the past. Definitely drink it when it gets to that room temperature. It's been, however, long, 41 minutes now since I've opened it, and it really literally opened up, and it's way more palatable. I think when it's cooler, it's definitely more sharper on the boozier notes. So cool stuff. Can't complain other than it was 440, 4.46 for a single bottle of that. But you know what? That's, that's, that's more along the lines of what thrash yeah that's that's paid. less that's, than i paid so that's, oh, that's about what it goes for on the yeah. single bottle yeah. shelf right. price where i'm at yeah i i love boulevard man you can't really go wrong no cheers to beers people yeah, yeah. Cheers oh yeah cheers man yeah and cheers. we got beer man Woo. all right let's see what he's got him with that you get him a Gang bang. Well, I had to um, take the wax. Hey, thanks, Bumpy, for letting me on. I appreciate it. Um, I took the wax. We took the wax dip off because they're annoying. Hopefully, <laughs> not a cork. there better not be a cork in this stupid thing. But um, this one is Skookum Brewery. Uh, I had they didn't have where they were from, so I had to look them up. They're from Arlington, Washington, Washington State. That is. Um. There's only one Washington State, right? Right. Yeah, because um, DC is the province or <laughs> district, whatever. The a Columbia yeah, that's district of Columbia. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> anyway. okay. This is solitary confinement. It's an imperial style <laughs> aged in oak barrels. Ooh, cool. Oh, that's convenient. COVID-friendly yeah, beer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. You have to drink it with a straight jacket on. It's an eleven percent. Um, uh, it's all right. Four fifteen twenty. I I don't understand this because they said they they aged it. It's a blend of imperial stout aged for ten to sixteen months in oak bourbon barrels. But on the bottle here it says one twenty one nineteen. So I'm thinking it's over a year and a half about. Yeah. Yep. So in the bottle. Yep. Um. So yeah, that that's kind of cool. Let's open it. Cool. Ooh, I was going to say wax capped and corked. Yeah, and no cork. Thank God. <laughs> I don't have a good one. Oh, it's oil canny. Man, I missed those glasses. Yeah, art. <laughs> you can put it in your car. Oh, this is so freaking beautiful. It's so, yeah, I, you can put this in your car for sure. The fi finger, finger head. Oh, God. Dude, it's one of those complex ones. Like the. You got like leather. You have um, <laughs> you got ma maple syrup. You've got um, molasses. You've got dark chocolates. It's very sweet, very smooth on the nose, very clean, um, very thick, and and just like whoa, fuck. Um, let's look at it. I'm gonna get this quick. So this is a tan. This is a dark tan, dark, not even like dark cocoa head. Uh, lacing's really nice. It's already starting to stick on there. All sludgy. Um, it's black, opaque, can't see through it. It's got a medium to fast rising bubble. It's, uh, it's black. It's straight up black. Um, let's drink it. Cheers. Cheers. Salute. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sweet. Immediately. The mouthfeel <laughs> is sweet, creamy, smooth. Um, as far as the flavors, vanilla, 
whiskey. Um, you're getting the barrel. Uh, it's very, uh, very boozy and, and spicy and alcohol in the back and the finish. Very dry and uh, very long finish. Uh, really tasty finish, though. Uh, you want to taste more. It's really nice. It's almost kind of uh, marshmallows up in your mouth. It's really nice feeling in the in the in the mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real um, a full uh, hearty body. I mean, it's it's definitely a meal. It it almost tastes like an oatmeal stout in a way. Uh, it's very smooth and creamy like that. Uh, um, very nice. The sugars on the side are looking decent. Um, starting to get all crystallized. Uh, 11%. What can you say? You know, the booziness, the chocolate, everything. It's wonderful. It's a good beer. Cheers, man. Cheers. Cheers. Stand, Cheers. Stand your beer yeah. that, man. Cheers. I still thought you were going with throat mayonnaise. No, man. No. <laughs> this is beyond throat mayonnaise, man. <laughs> it's creamy. <laughs> it's creamy already. <all> right. <laughs> Marshmallow. <-y. laughs> no, but no. Thank, thank you uh, for being here, beer, man. I don't know no why problem, people thank me man. for having me having them on my channel but uh no thank you guys for being here you guys are what make uh make multi monday happen so uh without it, it would just be a bumpy beer tasting um so all oh, right we got some comments flying in right now uh brand norwood says beer man beer wins it <laughs> probably didn't really sound like that but uh you still have Nina Yorty says, right, hey, cheers, beer man. <laughs> uh, G Day, what do you know? Good day. Good day. <laughs> Not G Day? G Day. What's good day? What's good day? Uh, <laughs> middle, fruit, middle Fruit says, hey, I seldom drink those high AB beers anymore. Five to six is about my norm these days. Because. I taxes in Canada on high ABV beers, right? You need to move to the States, Paul. Come on, man. Put you out the range of a lot of beers in Detroit. We'll let you. We'll let you in here. You know they're letting people get haircuts now, <laughs> right? Oh, and take mixed drinks to go out of restaurants. <laughs> and the zoo, the zoos, they've always been sha shaving the llamas. So I know we're about ready to shave some uh, llamas this spring. You can come on down. Llama All right. Take care of you. Got some cheers. Ron Ontario says, uh, I find that Burger King tends to use too much mayonnaise. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to get on with my beer so we can all give our words <laughs> and stuff. And, all right. What I brought is Clown Shoes Brewing Company. Uh, this is a barrel series. They're um, currently brewing out of the um, Harpoon Brewery locations. Uh, so Windsor, Vermont, Boston, Massachusetts. This beer is called Brunch Exorcism. Never heard of such a thing. <laughs> That's the uh, can art. I'm not going to read all that there, but it's got a little funny story about the beer and how. Brunch Exorcism. I'm thinking about those words. They created. created. So what this is, I can't read it off screen there, but there's a lot of literature down below. Um, and that's because this is an American Imperial Stout aged in bourbon maple. It's well, okay, aged in bourbon barrels, maple bourbon barrels. That's what's actually within this literature here. It says that in Irish whiskey barrels with coffee. And it's 10.25%. So let me go ahead and crack it and put it into a tiny glass. Okay. A big can and a tiny a glass. glass. Oh, it seems like a high percentage. And beer. I've never had this beer before, but I've had um, some other Imperial Stouts and other barrel aged, like messed up barrel aged um, products from Clown Shoes, and they were good. And this I thing has a, a what's the BV on that? Ten point two five. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, this thing does have a nice, rich, dark, chocolatey head. Um, the bubbles are growing larger, but they started off pretty small. Uh, this thing is, I'm just going to call it black. I mean, it is, it is black. There's no color in the reservoir. It's yeah. just black. Um, the aromas, I'm going to take myself off big screen. Woohoo! Wow. Uh, it's almost, almost a fudgy chocolate aroma. I'm getting the various, um, barrels. There is a little bit of a maple note in there. Um, does smell a, a little bit like oak. There's a little bit of the bourbon. 
can't really tell the whiskey over the bourbon because I don't drink too much whiskey or bourbon, but they're both pretty much the same. It just depends on where they're located, right? I'm not the whiskey person. Yeah, it has a fantastic, uh, fantastic nose to it. Uh, it smells pretty sweet. Fudgy maple oak bourbon, basically. All right, the uh, first swig. Cheers. 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 Mm. First up, this is a thick beer. Definitely a full body, um, very um, creamy mouth feel to it. It's loaded. This is a beautiful beer. Um, the cough. <laughs> I don't know where to start with this thing. There's there's so much going on. You get you get in the barrels. Um, you get in the maple syrup sweetness. My lips are sticky. There is a deep, rich chocolate flavor. Oh roastiness to it tail end a little bit of coffee but it's on uh it's on sweet throughout pretty sweet beer little little tad bit of bitterness at the tail end just to tie it all in but this is definitely a sweet stout hmm. <clears throat> is your beer cold or you just let it warm up oh, i definitely i've had i had this out um since uh Time to start my my. Uh, it was seven thirty that I started my uh, okay. little gathering. Um, yeah. I had it out uh, at seven fifteen. So what cool. time is it now? It's been out for a couple hours. Well, well, that's good. Though. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. It's it's definitely it's definitely room temperature. I'm gonna say it's up in the sixty degree range. Um, I can't find any faults in it. You know, being warm even. Um, alcohol presence. Not really noticeable except for the little bit of the the barrel presence that's in there and they kind of like bourbon or whiskey type character uh bitterness on it is very low but it does have that balance and bitterness at the end um with the coffee a little bit of coffee note there this is a this is a delightful beer um it, it says it's 10.25 percent but with the the fullness of the body it feels like it's a heavier beer than what it is um it doesn't taste like it's like uh super high alcohol like 14 percenter but the body feel kind of makes you feel like this is like a 14 percent beer so i think uh yeah they did a, a fantastic job on this I've, I've liked a lot of what clown shoes does with their imperial um imperial <laughs> can't we speak <laughs> imperial <laughs> beers uh, that they make um you know some of their other stuff their more shelfy style stuff is uh and eh, i can you know like the bubble bubble farm ipa they had out i don't really care for that one at all and some other ones but their imperial stuff they have not let me down so far so. all right with that said um we're gonna end up going through our uh scores of the beers that we have i'm going to drop myself out so i'm going to explain what you guys can do go through your scoring i'm going to bring john back up um and then i will drop john out again because he doesn't mind abuse uh, so john once you give your score once you give your score shout out your channel shout out anything you want to whatever's going on in your life whatever you want to talk about I'll drop you. I'll bring myself back up with, the, with my final score. Go over the uh, the roll call stuff and uh, talk about whoever wants to join an off air uh, to come up with the the next four styles for a uh, pull. So, cool. Ready, set, Anyway. go, and just go in the order that you do that you uh, went in original. You know, for your for your tasting. Cheers. Oh boy. So I guess I'm going to be going here. Okay, let me bring my notes back up. I, I wanted to read from the brewer's comments on this, and it was pretty much right on what uh, 
what Eric and I have bolt, you know, Thomas metal 75 and myself have uh, really found on this, the beer um, over the top. It's surprisingly approachable. This twist on a classic style starts with several types of malted barley, rye, oats, and wheat, robust flavors of vanilla espresso whiskey, chocolate and roasted grain are balanced by hints of dates and plums with just enough hops to round it all out. Roughly one third of the final blend is, is freshly brewed beer. The rest is aged up to a year or more in both first and secondary used whiskey casks. Uh, this is one of my faves. Um, it'll always get uh, one of the highest rankings that I can give for a beer. I never go to a hundred because there's always a beer out there that you're going to find. That's going to kind of knock that one right off. This will be a 99 with me. You'll rarely get a 99 from me. Whoa. And this is the Boulevard Whiskey Barrel Stout Imperial. Sure. Wow. Oh, I believe that. They got good stuff. You're drinking a 99 beer? That's, really? All right. Okay. So, my channel, Thrash Metal Homebrew. If you don't know me, go check it out. A lot of stuff lately from the standpoint of brewing. I have another brew day video I'm putting together. I've also been working on some of this stuff. Here, this is a this is a disc drive for a Commodore 64. It's got a massive issue with it. I got to figure it out. But anyway, I take these things, rip them apart, test them, get them working again. This is an actual full computer and a disc drive. This is just a floppy disc drive, people. This is the way it was back in the day. So, <laughs> That's freaking awesome. So cheers. Uh, cheers, man. <laughs> oh, hey. all right. Well. My thoughts on this um, fucking beer that I spent <laughs> a lot of money on. Um, it's pretty good. Um, the more that it's warmed up, I'm starting to get a lot more of those, like a, like a dark cherry flavor. Um, Cabernet barrels are coming through a lot more than the barrel, uh, than the whiskey barrels or the bourbon barrels. Sorry. Um, it's it's really good. It's got this real dark. It's got milk chocolate with the dark cherries, and it's marrying together very well now that it's warm. I didn't get a lot of legs, but it is very sticky. Um, mm. There's a lot of sugars on the glass. You can't really see it. Um, Beer Advocate scored this at a 95. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm really – I'm not going to go a 5 um, or a 100 out of 100. Um I'm going to put this at a 97. It was um, really good, but um, not the best Imperial I've had from them. It, this is very tasty. If you get the opportunity, if you see it, pick it up. If you got a little extra money to spend. Um, pretty, pretty good, though, man. I, I liked it. It was good. For twelve percent, or not too boozy. Um, like I said, the 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 bourbon barrel woodiness is is toned down, and I'm getting more of that dark cherry uh, cabernet barrel taste out of it, which is um, it's not bad. It's just different. So um, channel wise, I really don't have anything too much going on right now. Um, I think I'm gonna get out and do another um, magnet fishing video soon. Um, still waiting on my. Um, I'm a weekend on my ferment, so next Saturday I'll be pitching my secondary hops, and then two weeks from then I'll be doing my bottling, and then two weeks from that we're going to see what happens. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. John, do you want to go? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and go. That way Bumpy can drop me off in case he needs to moderate some stuff since he is the host. So, Dragon's Milk, Bourbon Barrel Aged Stout. It's had quite a good amount of time to warm now. It just keeps getting more complex and enjoyable. The body actually seems to have thickened up a little bit. As When I first started drinking it, a little colder, I said it was kind of thin-bodied for an 11% barrel aged stout. As it's warming, the barrel notes are coming through a little bit more, and the body seems to have picked up a little bit. Um, this is just a winner. It's You get all the all the – good none of the bad there's nothing offensive about it it's smooth like i said it would be a good beginner to kind of get into the higher abv barrel age stuff because most people should be able to find this 
and the price is not outrageous. Uh, like I said, you can get a four pack for under 15 bucks at most places. This is a 96 out of 100 for me. Um, it's one of those that I just I keep going back to. It's got great character, uh, pretty easy drinking considering the 11% alcohol, and it's just got good barrel notes, good a good backbone uh, without being too overbearing for somebody that might be you know new to the barrel age stuff. And as you can see, the head is still sticking around, and as I you know swirl it around, it regenerates a little bit. Just a beautiful, beautiful beer. Uh, I would highly recommend it. So 96 out of 100 for me. And uh, channel-wise, John and Ellie, Georgia Beer Reviews. I do Stout Sunday every Sunday at 1030 Eastern. Uh, a lot of people here on the panel join from time to time. And uh, we have a lot of fun. And I just do beer reviews. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, Bumpy, you can go ahead and drop me off. and I'll, I'd love I'll to make it for the, one of those, but I always work right? on Sundays. Well, anytime, yeah, you're all you when guys. I get it are Sunday off, though. Yeah, Bumpy joined one time. He, he usually works Sunday, but he had a Sunday off and he was able to join us once. But as long as you don't live on the Pacific coast. coast, right? <laughs> <laughs> and My here. Beer man, I would tell Air Man to join as well, but yeah, it's like what seven well, it's or no. thirty here in Denver. It'd be seven thirty for him and to it, be cracking open a stout. Oh yeah, I did breakfast <laughs> stout all the way, man. Breakfast stout with cereal, man. <laughs> with some oatmeal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imperial coffee stout. <started. laughs> all right. Well, I will be in the basement watching. John, maybe we'll see you on Wednesday. Wild card. I hope so. Hope so. <laughs> all right, my man, Michael Komarov. I think it's your turn. Hey. It, it is. I before Michael does go, um, we do have um, Ronald Sutton in the basement. Lower, um, as I drink it, it's still the intensity is still the same. Um, the barrel notes are still really strong, and um, I, I, it's an excellent beer. Tyler did not lead me astray about Central Waters. This one is a winner. Tyler, man, to give it a ninety-seven. Wow! Woohoo! Nice, nice. Some great. We're all up in the nineties. That's good so far. Oh. That leaves this guy in the middle. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes. Hash out your Commodore. That's my favorite band, the Commodore. Um. No, it's not. Uh, the Whiskey Barrel Stout. Ninety-nine out of one hundred says Thrash. Um. It's pretty damn good. I don't know if I'm gonna go ninety-nine. Different palettes, stuff, um, different tastes. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pretty generous though. I think it because why the hell not? It's, a, it's a good one. When you drink it warmer towards that room temperature, it blooms in its flavor. It's kind of like it, it almost has that decanted feel in the glass where it has time to breathe and do its magical thing. So, uh, 94 is still pretty damn good. Well, I guess yeah. I want a. Maybe I'm looking for the wrong flavor in smoothness, but, you know, for actually what it is, I, well, I guess the smoothness thing is if it was just like straight warming to me and didn't have even the slightest little burn going down when you uh, swallow the beer, maybe we'll get a tiny bit higher rating. But, I mean, I'm apples and orange picking, picking on this one. But, yeah, 94, good cherry soaked dark chocolate thing. If you do like the chocolate um, – kind of stouts and imperial stouts let this one warm you will not be disappointed even at four dollars and 46 cents there's so many other things that are uh whales hard to find beers the most sought after in the in the country and you don't have to go out for an arm and a leg you spend a tiny bit more again you don't go out out of your way to try to find it and it just performs the way you would think it would from reading whiskey barrel stout yeah cheers Cheers. Ah, I guess so we, good. we had we had Ron Ronald uh, Sutton in the uh, basement. Um you know, since vacated the basement. So I don't know if uh COVID nineteen got loose down there and he decided to evacuate um into the outside where it's safer. Um, oh. <laughs> but I guess I'll go I'll go with my score. Um and if Ron Sutton comes back in, if he had a a, a beer to uh to show off, then I will let him up to do so. 
And then um, Beer Man. Beer Man hasn't given his score yet. Well, that oh yeah, Bear Man. We yeah, we guys threw me all off. Y'all went and we're oh, yeah. yeah, go Bear Man. I, can't know. About you. <laughs> I can't open my lips. My lips are stuck together. Um, this is very sticky. There's some things I missed out in my shit. Um, so it's definitely as it got warm out. I'm just kind of reading off some notes. As it got warm out for about a half hour or so, about it was about 65, 70 degrees. Um, but as it got warmer, uh, more alcohol was present, and the bourbon whiskey smell really came out. Uh, the dark, it was a real dark, dark brown, actually, not a black. Uh, maybe you saw that through the light with the computer light going on, it you can see the brown. Uh, whiskey smell really comes out as it warms up. Uh, oh, I already said that. Um, maybe like dark chocolate, blah 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 blah. Okay, I'm repeating myself. Figgy and rich okay, cherry okay. flavors is what I got out of this. Figgy and rich cherry. Um, lips are definitely sticky and a five out of five hops. This was a delicious dessert beer, so very good. Cheers. Oh, yeah, awesome. Oh, any anything going on with your channel? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> cheese and beer, and then I do my many thing until I can start brewing on Wednesdays and then uh, Thursdays, beer and jerky. So, um, and then of course, uh, you know, food Fridays with Alex, uh, and then the weekends are off. So, Cheers, guys. Jesse, what was Cheers. Beer Man's score since I missed it? Five, 100. 100. He said five out of 100. Five. Okay. It was five. definitely five, two thumbs up. A 10. A fucking 10. Okay, five. Five. Not to be so generous, but that's what it is. Okay. It I got was it. delicious. I got it. Awesome. Nice. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, so. Uh, nobody else has joined in the uh, basement as of yet, so I will go with mine. Um, Ponchos and their brunch exorcism with the awesome can. And uh, Thrash always likes to make fun of me for picking up awesome can art because a lot of times. I'm just waiting like for it. you to show your wall of, of uh, a lot of times. I don't, I, I end up not liking the beer, but it's like I, 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 yeah. tons of beers. I just don't really care. You need for to make a wall. They're okay. They end up being like kind of good. Which is just above average, but you know they're craft beers usually, and um, it's like you you kind of expect more. But then, but then it's just there's so like you you have so many beers that are like way up here that that's what you kind of start to compare them to. And when right. a brewery makes a, a very good beer, but it's just not up to that standard that you're really looking for, it's like eh, you know how do how do you really rate it? But it's good or it's very good, but it's not excellent. This beer is excellent. Um, this is uh, way up there with uh, like the KBS and CBS. Whoa. And um, oh, what else have I had? Oh, uh, the six six uh, point uh, Masters blend. This is right up there with all that uh, delicious, well made brew. Uh, I was going to give it a 99 out of 100, but I've been drinking on it a little bit longer. And now some some of the alcohol notes are starting to shine through a little bit more. Um, but still very good. I'm going to give it a 98 out of 100. Nice. Nice. Yeah, this is uh, definitely one. If you, if you see it, I'd say pick it up. I mean, it's aged in three different things. You get the maple. And you've you had a lot of bourbon. cloud juice too, so yeah. I mean, there's a, they make some good beer. So yeah, where are they out of again? Because yeah, we get them here. Um, they're out of uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and Windsor, Vermont. Oh wow, yeah, well, I definitely get them here. Uh, That's crazy. They got brew. They got some better late than never. What's up, Rod? <laughs> yeah, cheers, hey, cheers hey, for Rod. Rod show, yeah. Oh, yeah, Rod. I'm getting swill. Damn. <laughs> that <laughs> bullshit, man. Yeah, that it's a uh, Boys. Boys have a. Uh, there's a new movie. A new movie coming out um, about the Beastie Boys. It's on Apple. I guess it's gonna be putting it out. But uh, yeah, you see a lot of Beastie Boys stuff coming out now. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you're ever if you're ever in the Beastie Boys and um, which I I was when I grew up. I mean that's mostly what yeah. I listened to. Love the Beastie Boys. I actually started doing my own research back before they had um all this like the the high speed internet and stuff i was like or at least you, you couldn't afford it not every household had it <laughs> um so i was I, I was going to like um circuit city and stuff i was buying movies vhs's of like beastie boys 
I, I had three VHSs of their stuff. And yeah, so I was like trying to create my own, like, like learn about them, their past and go through all that stuff. So it's really cool that all this, their history and stuff is all coming out now. And uh, so I'm, I'm super psyched about that. So it's funny you guys are mentioning. I remember a, uh, I remember a, a world without rap. <laughs> <laughs> I remember oh, vinyl oh, records. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Beastie Boys started off, you know, punk well, rock. The they kinda, no they longer kinda, silent, they, kept, so. they kept the punk, but they went into the rap scene because they all really liked rap and they kind of yeah, went from like the whole DM, you know, the run DMC <laughs> type of, you know, stuff. So it's cool. Um, but, uh, <laughs> there you go. Brandon said it. And I'll, do a quick, I'll do a quick Anna. shout out on uh, about, about what's going on my Biohazard. channel. Biohazard. We Come got on, the, Eric. Uh, the we can play that on guitar in three oh. notes. That's a different three note song, but yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So we got the we got the multi Mondays. Uh, multi Mondays. You know, we uh, we're gonna create a poll. Hopefully, we got some folks that can uh, join in an off stream thing, and uh, we can create a poll. Hopefully, we have a poll. Um, a poll maker as well. Um, I noticed D Dio was not here tonight. He was in the chat for a moment, I think. Yeah, for a moment, moment, yeah. Moment, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll try to uh, do that. We'll try to join up somewhere um, where we can fit whoever wants to come in. So it might maker. be it might be like a Google a Google Hangout, Let's very bad, crappy video footage stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Oh, Jesse, I'm not going to be on, but can you put in the Belgian styles, either the double or the quad? As yeah, we'll do the double. We did a double not too long ago. That'll be one of the ones in the I love the do a quad. We did. Yeah, we'll get we'll get that in there. Oh, we're doing you. these high ABV beers. You know, barley wines, quads. It's do triads. Let's do them all, man. Right before it gets too hot. <laughs> but um, yeah, other things happened on my channel. Um, I'm brewing again. Finally, I uh, just I brewed two beers in the past uh, this past month. Um, so there will be more brewing videos uh, coming up. I am I tried to do a live stream last time and I kind of messed up. I think with my without any music. Plus, I kind of realized like how long and boring brew days are for a lot of people if they're not like super like involved in brewing and stuff. So Man, and I don't I got, have anything to just chat about. If I don't have fourteen hundred watch minutes. Oh my. Yeah. Brew day that 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 put the shit up there. So there you yeah. think about it. Oh no, yeah, no, my mine's very boring. Well, well, boring. Bumpy, he's like real boring when he does his brew days. He's got everything. Yeah, Got to drink beer and <laughs> mingle with and people. He picks up dog poop and yeah, I pick up dog poop. <laughs> Damn. But uh, you know, so I'll probably be doing like brew day vlogs. I think that kind of worked for me. Oh, no, those, short, what you did short. work too is you know just putting out kind of like a little blip and then uploading it. Yeah, blip or my yeah. Post, I blip my brew day vlogs. Post yeah. them, save them, edit them, put it together, then post. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, well, well, there's too many yeah, right in a row. Know. You're not giving anything any time to grow. Things. Like Nobody that. wants to listen to YouTube friendly music either all day. So just just uh, listen yeah. to what you want, I guess, and just don't play that. We'll, we'll, we'll when play. you're putting it up, I, I do want to say. Uh, I, I want to say thank you uh, to the panel once again for coming in. Rules. Multi Monday. Rules. Uh, we don't know what next Multi Monday is going to be yet, but we'll create a poll. Um, it will be placed within our hangout. Oh, there's everybody to you. In our hangouts groups. They'll be placed there for everybody to vote on. Um, if you're not part of the hangout groups, uh, just go back to this video once it's live. Um, the poll that we create will be put into the um, description of this video. Um, so you can go ahead and vote there for what oh. you would like to see on the up upcoming Multi Monday. Um, and as always, uh, if if you're not part of our common panel, you know, folks that rotate through on this um, and you're in the chat constantly, if you ever want to join the panel, um, I do leave the link in the chat there eventually so you can join up uh, through the link in the chat. You can, find the beer, the beer. You can be on the panel if you so choose. Um, if not, if you don't want to be on the panel, but you still want to drink along, try to find the beer. It's, I think it's fun, um, to, uh, drink the same thing everybody else is drinking kind of at the same time, not the exact same beer, but you know, uh, yeah. try yeah. not to, but 
Yeah. But I want to, yeah, I want to say uh, cheers to everybody. Thank you to the chat. Thank you to the viewers tonight. We had uh, cheers, y'all. 20, 20, uh, thousand strong at one point. That was uh, that was very cool to see. Over for them. Um, so I think this was a, a, a pretty popular topic, anyways. I think a lot of people love imperial or barrel aged stouts. So yes, uh, we'll see you on there's the there's drunk wild card on Jay's channel. When well, oh oh. The wild card, um, that's when the poll comes down right now. Okay, so we're looking for it. Yep. Okay. Man, I, well, I'm glad I picked a winner this last week. Good. So, I'm uh, glad on, you the, on the barrel aged, you know. I, I, I well, figured you guys might have went over here. this already. Yeah, it's we're, that we're, where it's getting out of the stout. I mean, we're going to the lighter beers now because it's getting to be summer now. It was perfect timing. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, let's uh, let's go. I'm gonna end the stream. So, cheers to everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Um, cheers. See you, Rod J. Coming in. Thank you, Nina, for being here. Uh, Beer man, drunken one. Thank you for joining up. We're gonna figure out where we want to go after this. So, drunken one, um, since you popped in, if you want to create like some type of hangout for us all to go to, um, yeah, go on. You know, where would we? Just place it throughout all, all of our little hangout groups. Anybody that wants to join, we can to create the poll. I'd appreciate that very much. Uh, but yeah, just cheers to everybody. Thank you. It's oh, been an awesome COVID. Care time. About it. Cheers. And cheers.